Welcome to the Spinfoil Theory Podcast with your host, Taylor B. and The Bagels. Hello! And our very, very special guest, Dan Finity. Hi! Hello! Yes, thank you. Hi, very, I'm Dan. Very happy uh, to have you here with us uh, this evening. So just a, a little quick housekeeping. Um, if you haven't listened to us before... We are a little bit of an advanced uh, session podcast in that we don't really teach um, 100% on the topics that we're talking about. However, we are not exclusive about this. If you have any questions about anything we're talking about, we're happy to either explain, give you direction, or help you figure it out. So if if you're a little new, if you're a little fuzzy on some of the lore that we're talking about, like we might not cover it 100% in the recording, but like we're here for you. We, we want to make it so you can enjoy it. Aside from that, I think we're ready to introduce uh, this week's topic, so I, I can take the reins of this. The topic this week is, is Road Rage connected to Savathun's song? Road Rage is an adventure you can play on IO, and the crux of it is that you run around using old Cabal tech, leftover Cabal tech, because they were they were there, but they're not there anymore on IO, and you're trying to stop a Vex incursion against Rasputin. Now, in the mm -hmm. middle of this adventure, the Taken show up. The Taken show up, and they're fighting against the Vex. It's one of those fun things I love in this game where you you're f you run in on two factions that might be fighting <laughs> against each other and then as soon yeah. as you show up they all like settle their differences and start attacking you as a group uh, yeah <laughs> they, they're just sitting there like oh wait hold on there's that guy uh yeah. friends yeah uh, yeah yeah right, cool. yeah no, i i feel like we've unified so many different species here in the solar system <laughs> across the oh, different yeah. d1 games <laughs> yeah as soon as we show up too it's just yeah, they just, like, stop what they're doing. They're like, okay, you have my back shield guy? All right, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> I'm going to shoot this guy. Cool. Um, and it's, 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 it's so the, the, there's always that. But the, uh, the overall crux of the theory is that Savathun, as we are later revealed from, if we go uh, as a chronico chronological release of content, um is later revealed in Festering Core from release of this uh, adventure as being in control of the Taken. Mm -hmm. And so the crux of the theory is that Savathun's song is her diving into the arcology on Titan, finding... It's never really explained what, but they find something. Uh, her, her hive do. There are no Taken in this strike. Um, her hive finds something that allows them to collect guardian light and convert guardians into these crystals that they can use to power various nefarious things. Mm -hmm. and, and it's thought that maybe there were no even go there. There was there's a theory out there thinking that there's not even guardians there at all. That because she's kind of like a trickster god. Yep. I, I've come across this as well, where the yeah, she, where, she's basically being a siren. She's summoning in guardians. So, yeah, she's, so we never actually spoke you to in. Take 04. We spoke to Savathun. Exactly. And yeah, I think I think this fits perfectly. I think this fits perfectly because at the end of the day, what she's doing is sizing up humanity's current defenses. Um, on. Io, when you go back to various quests and adventures like Dynasty or the Festering Core Strike, you learn that Savathun, or at least the Taken, her her arm that are the Taken, are collecting Vex. We learn that they're amassing an army, like Akora, Akora says this uh, on audio like several times. And so the, the whole idea is this is all interconnected into her grand tapestry of of attacking humanity and so all things are connected if you look at her amassing weapons and you look at her shifting over to titan amassing weaknesses mm -hmm. this is all part and parcel because even even um and and i'm really a fan of this theory but even if it's true and that's just you know just for sake of argument 
she's testing us out. She's figuring out our our possibilities, our our limits. Mm-hmm. And so if and when, and I don't think she'll ever be a direct. I mean, I realize that that's a little bit how they sell it up, but I I don't think they'll oh, I don't wow. think she'll ever be a direct enemy. I think she would she would right. misdirect just 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 because her 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 tithe is based on secrets right so if if things go right like when she attacks we should ne- have no idea that it's her for her to be most most successful even if the attack isn't correct yeah uh, my my impression is that she is not like oryx whatsoever and in, in uh, or zebo or Aph for that for that matter and that she will not attempt a direct confrontation as long as she can avoid it she well, will yeah well, but, I'm I'm very interested in how and how Ziva Raf ends up co- being brought up because I, I I think we've had ever since the uh, the uh, I, I I know it's there's more than one book of sorrows but we only have the one really that we get to read yeah. so I'm just gonna call it the book of sorrows. She's in the margins of the book of sorrows. Back in back in the uh, last game, mm-hmm. just sort of like uh, steering well, our interpretation of everything, you know. Yeah. Well, Zebu Wrath, <clears throat> pardon, being more of a trickster god, and, or Zebu Wrath is, 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 is the smash, she's the smash and grab sister. Mm-hmm. She's, she's the, <laughs> she's the titan of the three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. She's got a tiny little statue next to somebody Ooh. in their tower. Ooh. Uh, and the... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, like, that kind of makes, I, I'm hoping... Eventually, I'm hoping that we face each of the sisters. Uh, the idea that yeah. we wouldn't face Zebu Wrath, or not Zebu Savathun. I keep saying Zebu Wrath. I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, the fact that we wouldn't, we're all uh, with the you. idea that we wouldn't see Savathun in person, and that it would just be like kind of the machinations of of the um, the universe kind of deal. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting concept. I hadn't thought about that. Before. Well, I I I I definitely think like. Eventually, at least for in-game purposes, if I if I look at it like from an out of game dev standpoint, like I I bet we'll probably get to fight her that at some point. But mm-hmm. I I feel like, and this is me projecting, if I were writing that that story, we wouldn't know it was her till we got to the end of it. To build on that concept, well, like maybe be... maybe the first time we think we're fighting Zivu or Wrath, it was actually Savathun. And then Zebu Arath is like still on the horizon, and she's bringing I, her war moons to us. I could see that too. Um, what I was thinking is, I'm thinking like a a purely puzzle based raid instead of oh, uh, like, dude, like a, I would a be so raid. here for that. Okay, <laughs> I would be some more so Niobe labs. here for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Like that. All right yeah. So I, I I will say this. I will say this. I love puzzles. I hate that most of the community puzzles from this game have been math. Because I have dyscalculia, mm-hmm. and that's really inaccessible to me. <laughs> like, I am here for a limerick, but like Jesus Christ, <laughs> that first outbreak. Like, I, yeah, I am, I, I am. I stayed up so late watching that. That was fascinating, dude. I am not doing calculus to figure this out, though. Like, I'm just gonna tell you that right now. And and I okay. feel like I feel like I can call myself a lore theorist at this point. <laughs> I only I have spreadsheets everywhere, but they only have words in them. <laughs> Organizing information doesn't mean you're like it, it's it's <laughs> it's I, I I tell you like I, I'm here for spreadsheets. I'm here for yeah. easily accessible information, but something about like all right, like solve for X. That's Niobe Labs. I'm like, oh fuck. I don't wanna no get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna go shoot some shoot some thrall till you guys figure this out if butterfly equals wave get me out of here yeah like i can't mm. <laughs> i was not the person to depend on for this <laughs> um still haven't cleared that all right go ahead. <laughs> i i haven't i honestly i haven't i haven't either i never did I, the, uh... I got through it, it it's hard <laughs> yeah dan it's if you a... don't know this about the bagels he has the highest friggin grimoire score that i've ever seen oh you're a triumph hunter are you i am a triumph hunter gotcha yeah. okay yeah i and... just i like to know who i'm dealing with that's cool. yeah. <laughs> in in more ways than one he's also a hunter main 
It's true. He and I, are, he and I are really good friends. <laughs> oh, Groovy, I, I, are you a hunter main? Yeah, dude. Dude, we're all hunter mains right here. I knew I liked this podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. What is? I mean, I guess this maybe should have been an introductory thing, but what is? What is your like? Your druthers. What is your druthers way to like run with your hunter? Like what? 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 What subclass do you prefer? I n- I like middle tree arc strider. I like Groovy. to. I like. Yeah, I like to. I like to fling my rod around. Mm-hmm. I like mm-hmm. to reflect things back at people. Mm-hmm. Uh, lately, I've been using like a warmind build, where I'm mm-hmm. creating cells all over the place with double oh, skip grenades. Super, and cool. it's been it's been really fun lately. I've I've just had a blast doing that. So I love that bagels. I I feel like I've played with you enough, but you're such a utility player. I want to ask you what your actual favorite is to play. I love we're Top Tree Arc Strider so much. Really? Fire's handshake the map. Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun. Just yeah. dodge, punch, dodge, punch, dodge, punch. <laughs> I, I feel so, like I'm half Titan. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so to, Top Tree Arc Strider for me, I, I've tried to explain this in a couple of ways. Like back when the revelry was happening and mm-hmm. um, yeah. also when gathering laurels recently mm-hmm. for the guardian games i was like guys like you don't even have to dodge just <laughs> if you punch enough dudes it'll reset like just keep punching <laughs> and you can titan. just farm yeah them. Like, just, just, like, they're like yeah, i don't Spider is the titan of the class <laughs> oh yeah uh 100 100 and, and i love the way he does the like the kung fu like uh perpendicular punch as opposed to like the turning punch not that it's like less strong i'm not like talking shit but it's just like a very great like right boom, like reminds me of a bruce lee movie see i like the i like middle tree arc strider because the the melee attack on there at least has some range like you're mm. you're you're scraping arc energy out towards your energy or, uh, enemy mm-hmm. energy out towards your energy you're scraping yeah. it out towards your enemy <laughs> and like just completely decimating them if you if you hit them uh after a couple pot shots. Uh, <laughs> other than that, what of, it's I, it's just a really fun class. One of all right. So I the, the middle tree is my preferred when I play Arc Strider. I'll mm-hmm. at least make that call. My preferred class is the Outlaw Gunslinger. Okay. I like my trip mine throw a knife, and mm-hmm. then now that sticky grenades are back. I got my young Ahamkaras on, and I love my sticky grenades paired with that. And I can't confirm this based on anything other than anecdotal evidence, but I feel like wearing the young Ahamkaras makes your little throwing knife last longer also. Hmm. Because <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll throw it, and, and like I, I'm, I'm not the greatest in threes, but I'm okay in sixes. <laughs> and I'll okay. throw it at something... Go off, do something else, and then like way later than I expected it to be, my throw knife will kill someone who was trying to run away from somebody else through where I threw it from. And nice. it's, it's okay. well, it, it's the greatest feeling when like you're running away from somebody and then you see your throwing knife you threw like however long ago killed somebody. Like, all right, <laughs> yeah, I'm not so useless after all. <laughs> like, <I've> got... <laughs> Uh, but that was that. That's a lot of fun. All right, so I, I I'll yeah. be the I'll be the odd one out in the in the uh, in the hunter bunch. But we're all we're all great because we know how frabjous our cl- cloaks are. Mm-hmm. Um, and so no no disagreements on that end. All right, so but 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 back to the back to the theory. Uh, I I I've talked about explaining it enough. Bagels, what are your thoughts on okay. on this on this particular episode here? So. I can get behind it um, w- with a little bit of a stretching of the imagination. So I got a little uh, dive down into to go into, particularly the Dynasty quest line. Do it. Um, the first, basically, the Dynasty quest line is the first time we witness taking uh, the taking process, however you want to phrase it, the taking, taking, <laughs> taking, taking enemies <laughs> in, in, in uh, D2. Um, and so, uh, what what it seems like is Quoria is slowly learning how to take enemies. What we know mm-hmm. from uh, from the lore from Toland talking is that Quoria uh, learned how to take by simulating Oryx. 
Mm-hmm. So it isn't actually Sabathun herself that is taking enemies. It's Coria that is doing the taking. And and at least in theory, Coria is probably controlling the, the taken as well. Um, I'm a little less sure about that. It could be Sabathun. But she's um, subjugated directly... to Sabathun anyway. You slice it, right? Exactly. It, yeah. Either it's it's Sabathun controlling Coria, controlling the Taken, or Sabathun con- directly controlling the Taken. It's a little fu- fuzzy there. I'm I'm just wanting to point that out for completeness' sake there. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, regardless, it, the Dynasty quest end. It looks like Coria is is in the process of learning to, to take. The first uh, step of that quest line is uh, premeditation. And you can see that the Vex are trapped in Taken Orbs, but none of them are actually taken in that portion of the uh, of that quest line. The next step is cu- Calculated Action, which is the first time you actually see the taking process happen. And so uh, it seems pretty slow yet. And then again in uh, uh, the long play, you see even more there. You see multiple Taken uh, Vex actually pop out and you see the end result of the t- the taking process. Um, so it looks like that whole quest line is is thrown in there in order to show you how Coria has actually progressed in her ability to take enemies. Um, mm-hmm. Now, this is, we have to take, uh, sorry, <laughs> I should probably not use take in any other frame of... <laughs> <laughs> we should extrapolate. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we take an extrapolate. asterisk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, out, out of that, uh, it's it's a question of, of whether or not Quarry can take other enemies than Vex at, at that point. I personally haven't seen Quarry take like Fall or, um, or Fallen or anything like that in in any interactions so far. Correct me if I'm wrong. I I can't recall any instances of that. I'm trying to. I would. I would only. Well, I, I would only add if. All right, so we don't know when Sabathun and or Coria, no. by way, took control of the Taken. However, Taken have been involved since the vanilla. So we, I think there could be an argument that she's either able to control, at very least, Cabal Taken, because there have been Cabal Taken involved at every step of the way. Yeah, we have Shattered, like Shattered Throne... Um... Another one of Sabathun's like get get guardians quick schemes mm-hmm. um, <laughs> has has Cabal in there. I only I know this because I, you know, I've been trying to solo it lately. You kind of um, play the game. I've heard this. Yeah, I kind of play the game <laughs> occasionally. I've been known to play the game from time to time, but um, <laughs> yeah, she she definitely has. There's some phalanxes in there. I got booped off real hard by one of them, dude. Uh, so, I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm just trying to clarify. Um, I, I'm not saying that Quarry can't control other Taken that are already right. taken. That already I, took. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, they already just, got got. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a question of whether or not she can actually uh, convert additional Taken of the other species. That that's mm. I'm just trying to draw that distinction. That's fair. I'm just not quite we haven't sure seen that demonstrably. That. And well, so, you... I, I, yeah. And you'd think if you simulated orcs, though, you would. And orcs I would, I would had... similarly guess. So, but yes. they didn't simulate orcs; they simulated Aurash. Ah, uh, okay. Well, so pre t- pre worm orcs, or at least like very early pre paracausal orcs, because that's 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 the line it draws is that oryx notices that he's not looking at necessarily himself. And it notes pre- that our rash is the simulation that's finally presented. That's pre Coria being taken. I think uh, Paul- that is pre Coria being taken, but but my only point is it couldn't simulate a paracausal being. I think our rash is sort of like maybe uh, like a like a missing link between the sisters back back when they're all thrall and. Uh, the sisters, when they all have their worms fully ingested and they've defeated, um, oh, what were the, what were their, what were their, it's what, uh, defeated the other krill. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. When they before the it, it's like a a middling thing because that's like Aurash isn't Oryx's hive form initially. Oh. It's Oryx's first morph, and which is something that's... all krill do. Correct. And that's that's a good distinction. However, uh, the argument is that post um, conversion, Coria, because uh, she is at least partially paracausal herself by being taken, is, is able to simulate paracausal entities. I mean, that's a stretch. She hasn't been, unless like the only way I could see that happening is if there's some connection between what the nine are doing in the reckoning. And Quaria, because then she's simulating shadows of Oryx and other things that she couldn't have taken herself. So my my line of thought here is that in order to take enemies, in order to do that, she has to simulate Oryx, Oryx himself, not not Arash. She had, in order to actually do the conversion process into the taken. Otherwise, you have incomplete data. Yeah. Exactly. So she wouldn't be able to take if she was simulating Orash at that point. So it's more of a experiment or a, a demonstrated aspect that she should be able to uh, simulate Oryx. I can as dig that. The, the conversion process. I can dig that for real. Dan, like, what are what are your thoughts on the on the theory? How, where do you, where are you coming in from? Like, I I like the idea that she's testing us. I like it. I'm trying to figure out how it fits in with the other stuff that she's got going on. Because we have the curse and the Dreaming City, which is another, like I said, another one of her Get Guardians quick schemes. <laughs> um, we have... Does... Uh... I can't remember exactly what I was going to say, but... Oh, it's no like, worries. Yeah, yeah. She she seems she she seems to be like a trickster sort. Mm -hmm. We haven't really seen. We haven't seen what the pyramid ships are actually. Um, and we know they're at varying sizes. Yes, very well. All chips break in the bag. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that explanation. I really haven't heard that before. That's a, that's, that's a wonderful. He's made I just my day. Trademark it. I'm gonna trademark it. Yeah, Nobody T can TM it. can can we use it for being first source of distribution? <laughs> sure. Groovy. I'm here for that. I'm here for that. <laughs> but yeah, so I I don't know. I, I I like it as an idea. Then again, I I I could also see it as like maybe not maybe it not being a uh, attack of intent. And more an attack on the Vex as opportunity. I could I, like, yeah, I can take that. Absolutely, they were yeah. passing through, and it's just like, oh, hey, what do you guys got? What do you got? What do you guys got in that Hydra? What do you got in that Hydra? I want, I want some of that Hydra. I want what's in that Hydra. <laughs> Give me what's in that Hydra, and like then yeah. going after him that way. I could see it more as an opportunity in that in that specific mission. I, I based on, yeah. I well, I'm I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I, I just no, think no. what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. From from everything that we've seen out of her, she's she's trying to get us. She's she's trying to. She's already created some sort of like battery, basically, with the Dreaming City, mm -hmm. and and basically just farming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, farming her own might come out of that. <laughs> no, no, like in in the Gloria Stefan album that is the Destiny Universe, she is definitely the rhythm is gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, she is. That is perfect. That she is, is wonderful. <laughs> she is definitely the rhythm. Like a hundred percent agreed there. Um, I I. <laughs> if she is not voiced by Gloria Steph Stefan. Please, please, at, at Bungie, please, please. I'm sure Miss Estefan would would be there for it. What is she doing nowadays? She's she is living her, her best life, I presume. All right, I'm going to wiki this <laughs> while, you, while you continue the conversation. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um, I mean, 
the the fact that it's called Savathun's song, not not Savathun's whatever, takes yeah. me back to Iryut. Like she's cultivating a defensive mechanism. Now, is it because of the darkness ship down there? Because we, uh, uh, Dan, you, it, f- full full fairness, if you haven't listened to all our episodes, but we we've, we've talked <laughs> about the uh, the tiny yeah. Dorito ship in the center of the moon. Yeah, uh, yeah. In, in a past episode here, and it's like maybe she's doing it because she knows that's like a conduit to the greater levels of the power that all hive draw off of. Mm, okay. Uh, the, that, that's just like one example of what it might be. I'm not saying that's what it is. Sure. Yeah. But the idea that she's developing, uh, what I would determine as a defensive song to kill anyone yeah. who's within earshot on the okay. moon, again, of all places, I, I think that goes part and parcel with the activities on IO where full the school like full commentary from the vanguard involves like she's building an army she's amassing units like she's she's got this like whole plan to uh assault humanity or at least our solar system in whatever capacity she does now right i'll be the first one to say i don't think she's it, it doesn't make sense for the the triplet of secrets of the hive sisters to to do a direct assault like that like i've amassed this huge army now fuck you but but i will say i do think it makes sense for her to set up defensive measures in what now has become the most intriguing destination in my view at least in terms of the hive and the taken and all that in d2 which is the moon yeah that's that's sort of where I'm coming from. I I, I think there are. De- if, if if I were to crank it up to eleven, mm-hmm. is the point I'm at in the show. If I don't know if I'm a hundred percent there based on what's available, but if I were to crank it up to eleven, and say like, how could I make this work? There is not a lot of connective writing that I would need. Yeah. To make you're, you're Charlie in the board. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, there's not yeah. there's not a lot of connective material I would need to make this all like mesh together. Yeah. You know, over here, you see she's got she's got the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she got the she's got the take it over here and they're clearly you're clearly <laughs> going after something. You got Shadow We got the batter. Oh my god. It's all connecting. I yeah, I will say bad. I will say I will say all that being said, I am sincerely interested if either Crota's daughter's brood like Hash Ladoon is in contention yeah. with Ziva Ref or working with Ziva Ref. Yeah. This, that's what I was looking at. Or Ziva Ref or Savathun. Or, I'm sorry, Savathun. I did the same thing. Oh, yeah. So don't feel bad. <laughs> Dude, I did the same. Yeah, no. I, I, get, I get you. I was I was, just... <laughs> so many... Uh, like I wish the names were less uh, well, in I'm... English, like starting with this or J. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to look up here, like because I want there's I want to say that Zebu Arath's brood shows up in the moon stuff in the Red Keep. In the Red Keep think so so those those hive uh the red hive that are in the um the moon stuff yeah are sort of abandoned and influenced by the darkness ship so they're right. like hive that we would have encountered in d1 which would have been previously crota that are the now being form. influenced by that ship specifically like they've been reformed okay and that's why they're different than hive than we encounter elsewhere in the solar system gotcha I was th- that's I was just my just understanding think- of it like if you <laughs> if you've got some shit like let's hear it like <laughs> i was trying to think of like i was trying to think of um i thought that there were some named enemies in there that were tied to zivu or wrath but i could be very wrong um Hold on, I'm looking. I'm looking at the head and swarm, looking to see if there's any direct connection. Yeah. Um. 
the wiki doesn't say anything. Yeah, no worries. I'll clear out any dead space on this fantastic episode. <laughs> <laughs> Zero Wrath spawn show up in the Dreaming City. I So I could be wrong about this. I yeah. think that um Coria has a simulation of Zivu Wrath as well. Okay. So I think if if she's able to take additional enemies, I think she can also produce uh, take additional siblings. Ex- well, yeah, to take <laughs> oh uh, my. take the spawn of the, the siblings essentially. Gotcha. Uh, okay. As, as uh, taken. Um, I th- I think I, I think in the whole pyramid scheme that is the hive slash presumably the darkness. I feel like that all fits. You can take something that's like of this base level or lower, because they have x amount of paracausal presence that's why they can't take guardians and that's yeah. why they can't take like ascendant hive in the pyramid scheme see what i did there oh no dude like i have a whole i have a whole <laughs> post on the economy of the hive like from a couple years ago on on destiny lore and i think that's one of our like topic choices but yeah no it's, Who knew it's bernie it's... madoff was was in the sword <laughs> dude no it's it's a whole pyramid scheme like because it, it, as Demonstra- as demonstrated by Oryx, being at the top means you have all the power and then everyone else is tithed to you and it's like a subset yeah. of tithes like going up but for that yeah no it's a total pyramid scheme. <laughs> <laughs> See. Oh. So Yeah, so- it was a link to that article that I found. I love it. Uh- so guys, as as sort of a, I, I feel like we're at a place that we can start like calling scores. Okay. Um, I'll start. I'll start with our guest, Dan. Um, we have, if you don't know, we have an arbitrary number score that so far okay. has gone has gone as high up as, I think like eighty seven. Okay. But it there is no limit. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it can be like. A plus four or a negative against. I think we've gone on negative nineteen or like something like that. Something like that. <laughs> it is completely arbitrary and bullshit. So you can attribute okay. whatever number value you want to it. But okay, what are your thoughts on this theory's plausibility? Score it, please. If let me use the parlance of this season's warmind bits, shall I? <laughs> um. So, if I were a betting man, I would probably I would probably bet encrypted war mine like 75 encrypted war mine bits <laughs> that Z, that Sabathun is in control of everything and that she is she did sick those those uh taken on the Vex on purpose and that it was that it was a targeted threat. I would also then make a side bet with somebody who's just listening and be like, "Hey, I'll bet like I'll bet fifty that it was just they just stumbled upon him and was like, "Hey, what's in that hat? Give me what's in that hat. I'll take everything in that hat. Give me your wallet. Give me your wallet. Give me your keys. Now, all right. Now the watch. All right, cool. So and then, then we like, upon how many D and D like tabletop rogues have you played? In... Uh, I have not played D and D at all. Ever. I was gonna say, like, um, if and when you do, that's your class because your instincts are on point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That's just me being streetwise. <laughs> yeah, that's a feat, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think, uh, yeah, if I if I were a betting man, okay, yeah, it is a targeted. It it would be targeted if if all of this is a puppet show, and we're playing to the strings then yeah but i I don't know man so if i'm hearing you right if i'm hearing you right it's like all the things we think are sabathun aren't actually sabathun and it's I'm, I'm, it's like ooh, it, everything that's I, attributed to her is like maybe like a form of misdirection am i hearing you right there yeah kind of yeah let's say yeah <laughs> that, <it's laughs> like, that maybe maybe we give to give her too much ugh, maybe, I don't want to say we don't give her too much credit, but maybe we give her too much purpose 
and in reality there's there's a little less conniving evil like planning on her part and more so like this one section of it was just oh hey they got a thing i want that thing Mm -hmm. get that thing for me I feel like that's that that goes back into like the age old like the greatest uh, trick the devil ever devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> and so like when it's not Sabathun, like you were crazy for thinking it was, but when it was, like of course. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a, that's a fun part of uh, of the lore, I think for sure. Bagels, what what are your thoughts? I'm going to put this personally around a five. Uh, my thoughts are, I don't know that Sabathun actively told the the Taken and the IO region to go ahead and say, hey, go and assault this Vex collective yeah. so you can, you can grab this, uh, this mine core that has data on Rasputin and Anna Bray. I don't know that that was necessarily the thought process there. Had, um, now, if the Vex have some oversight and some minor uh minor lord like a feudal lord sort of thing of of the taken said hey those are vex over there and said hey go get this item for me yeah i can kind of see that a little bit um now obviously that points back to to sabathun eventually because she would want any and all information to to be gathered and sent to her Uh, that kind of makes sense to me I, i can certainly see that um and we certainly do see uh sabathun messing around with us in a variety of different ways, be it um, the murder battery and, and duel in Karnu, um, and then uh, in Baru, just in general, w- via the mm-hmm. uh, power book. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's th- there's certainly a, a possibility of a connection there, but there just hasn't been enough um, enough evidence to really point in that direction yet. I, I I really dig that. I, I I'm kind of picking up what you're putting down right there. Um, for me, I I I think it's I I give it like a 27 plausibility, and and that's arbitrary. But I only say it's that like, if it worked out to where like oh haha like I pull back the veil, my name is Zavathun, <laughs> and like this is all like the tapestry of like shit that I did that. <laughs> you thought was bullshit story, but here I am years later. Like I'd be here for it because that's fun for me. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm also here for there being like much smaller manipulations that she could have in it. Like she didn't cause them to make this choice, but she pushed them in a direction that made that choice advantageous to her. Yeah. And so in all the little things that she's doing, like, uh, at that point, the arcology might be more a little something that, like, she's not actually trying to absorb or harvest guardians for energy, but she made it so the vanguard stopped sending people down into that part of the arcology. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I could like, see that. Like for, for outside of us. <laughs> it, it, well, well, after that first mission, you're like, well, that's why yeah. we why we can't go down there because they're just gonna make us into these crystals that are made out of uh, grape Kool Aid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great <laughs> stuff. Yeah, no, no. Right. Hey, I, I, I want to know what's up with that purple drink. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but that, that that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's. There's there's so many ways when you have someone who's basically a trickster god involved mm-hmm. that you can spend something. And so I, I, I'm here for all of these things being connected because I'm sure because her name is released, they will be. Yeah. And so to go back to like what, what brought us all together here tonight, like I think that subsequently finding out that Sabathun since Oryx's death is the one who's in control of the Taken Sabathun manipulating us on other planets with her high forms the, like shows that she doesn't even need the Taken to make us make moves I right. think it's 100% at least plausible that she had her hand in summoning the Taken to stop the Vex or at least take over their operation in the Road Rage Adventure. (laughs) 
I don't think I've ever tied it together that like what's the word? Resolutely. Ma- narratively. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Thank you guys. But uh, but yeah, that's <laughs> That's, I think, where I was going with this when I was uh, messaging the bagels drunk, however, like two months ago. Ah, right? <laughs> Playing it as the heroic adventure, like, the bagels, you don't fucking understand. <laughs> so, with that, with that, <laughs> I'm going to close this out here because this has been a fantastic episode. I don't think I'm going to have to edit much out of at all. Uh, because of how great uh, you, Dan, our guest was, but also how well you Thank meshed you. with us, uh, the host. Um, Bagels, you got any shout-outs? I want to just say that we have clearly made her stronger by just discussing her in this podcast today. Oh, God. <laughs> clearly, we've made a grave error, and... We should never, <laughs> we should hide this. The bagels, this, uh, this the bagels, was, the the bagels is apology. recording and reflecting in four <laughs> dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, um, Infinity. Uh, where, where can, where can our and your fans now find you? Oh hi, my name is Infinity. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, oh my God, did I forget how to do this? I forgot how to do oh, this. I, like I should have done it at first. I'm so sorry. It's. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. No, my name is Infinity. You can find me on Twitch three days a week. Uh, that's Tuesday and Thursday from four to ten p.m. and Sundays from ten a.m. to five p.m. Uh, doing PS4 uh, PVE helps there on Sunday. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Danfinity. Danfinity, where the eyes are L's. Um, and I have a I have a podcast called Side Quests that I'm the host of. Uh, and I also do a I'm I'm one of the co-hosts for the planet destiny podcast yay so yay, yay. Yeah. um i'm i'm so i i i started following you through our mutual friend mark i spend one h um okay yeah yeah He's a and good dude. and oh dude like he, he 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 and us go go way back we were like old like ps4 buddies like ended up going to <laughs> like dream hack together like it, it, yeah it's it's been a, a wild ride um, so that's how I got onto you. I'm a big fan of your podcast in particular. That that's how I've most consumed your content. Yeah, well, so for for side quests, it's like it's it's a weird combination of a few different things. So like I used to have one called Side Quest Sunday, where I would just interview guests, and that nearly killed me. And then <laughs> I was I decided to do another podcast called Destiny Digest, and I did that for a while, where it was like. Every day, you would at least get five minutes of news about the world of Destiny, mm-hmm. and then that nearly killed me. Uh, Green Eyed <laughs> Music Lover helped with that. Yay! And, uh, Shout out yeah, to Green. Yeah, hi Green. And uh, Green Eyed Music Lover, and yeah, it was just a really fun time. And that was three. That podcast lasted three months, where I was releasing it every day. And I took a I took a little break and was like, okay, what am I gonna do here? I like podcasting. I don't want to break my back doing it. How do I how do I combine these these two things that I like doing into just one space? And so, side quests. I interview people sometimes, uh, and the interviews always end with like a five minute RPG section. Which lately we've been playing AI Dungeon. In the past, there was a character that was created by the first guest, and then that character ran all the way through to the last guest of the season um and i would just make that up on the spot and then uh it has i have the dps report in the middle after the intro bit Mm -hmm. um and that's usually our seven to ten minute news section on what's going on in destiny or borderlands or anything else uh, fps related and then it goes into the interview later on in the in the show so usually it's about an hour i try to keep it about an hour but, that's that, yeah. that's where I was actually really struggling because uh as Green might tell you like the Bagels and I are recently in these quarantine times that we all find mm-hmm. ourselves in yes. um are actually doing a uh D20 like tabletop thing. Yeah. And so like I it, we were having a blast with it. I I'm not going to go into too much detail because <laughs> it, it it's a private game. But um 
that that's where I was like struggling to to define. It. I was like, you talk about like you have the D twenty part, and then you have like the defining part. So thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you for defining it yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I, really, well, I really it's, appreciate it's, that. It's a weird animal. It 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 doesn't focus on one thing. It goes kind of everywhere. Which side quests really is the best title for it because it is able to dig into these like little niche areas that aren't necessarily the main overarching thing Mm -hmm. Mm so 100 percent agree no but um you have great energy when you're on there and i really dig how much you like vibe with your guests you guys really seem to bounce bounce off each other like very well uh as 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 a listener and a fan (laughs) (laughs) um well thank you yeah, no worries, no worries. Like hundred percent, that like uh, that 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 kind of fueled a lot of because like uh, uh, I'm not gonna lie, like we had interacted a little bit on Twitter, mm-hmm. and, the, and then we followed each other, and then yeah. I was like, let me check out this dude's stuff, and like that's where I kind of was like, I need to invite this dude on the show. <laughs> well, was, thanks. It's was been listening, fun. <laughs> was 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 like listening to your stuff during my uh, work at home day. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, it, so I've been in bands in the past too, and like I, I've everything that I do kind of points at like make stuff that that helps people get through their day. And if the podcast does it, if music does it, if the stream does it, cool, I'm down with it. So, yeah. Um, well, th- thanks so for inviting me on, and thanks for enjoying the show. Oh, dude, like thank you so much. I really appreciate that uh, that you're here for the people who consume what you're putting out there, as opposed to like whatever, uh, whatever opposite effect that might have. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so, sir, like I, I guess I'll end it with this. Any shout outs you might have? Um, shout outs to Current Meta Clan. Shout outs. Uh to the nine man squad we got together last night for uh the seraph towers and that one blueberry who allowed us in but wow. he didn't understand a word that we were saying because he was from portugal ah. word up to you the portuguese blueberries are something we all really should yeah. hope for in our life and <laughs> when we get them reflect upon how lucky we are they didn't kick me to space after I joined. So that was good. <laughs> Bagels, any shout outs you got going for us, brother? I already got my shout out. So your turn. All right, <laughs> fine. I'll shout out. You don't have to shout out. That's fine. Um, so my shout out is to Danfinity and Thank you. his community and his stream and his podcast, the SideQuest Podcast. Uh, predominantly, my my further shout out is to all the people. Uh, much like uh, to Danfinity's motivations that are trying to do everything that they can right now to keep us all in these strange times that we live in entertained, uh, maybe uh, give us a little opportunity to escape. And yeah. I think I think that's worth its weight in gold. So that's that's where my shout out goes. With that. I think uh, I'm ready to end it all here, you guys. So, all our listeners, till next time, bye-bye. Bye. Later.